Hello and welcome to today's video about how to knit a dishcloth. As you can see behind me, we have started setting up all of our Christmas decorations. So it's always been a family rule of mine that you can't set up any Christmas decorations until after November 11th out of respect for our Canadian veterans. Um, but it is now past the 11th and so I have gone full-blown decorating mode. Christmas is by far my favorite holiday. Um, so yeah, let's get into today's video. Knitting a dishcloth is often one of the very first things you learn um, if you're learning to knit. It's the very first thing that I learned how to do and my grandmother was the one who taught me. Um, so I'm going to be using the first pattern that I learned for knitting dishcloths. Don't own this pattern, you can find it on the internet. It's often under um, grandmother's dishcloth. So it's really simple, really beginner friendly as well. And all you need is some yarn. You can get the big yarn, um, these packs come at either Michaels or Walmart and they're more cost effective if you know you're going to be doing multiple of them or you can also get the smaller bundles of yarn. I found these make about two kind of seven inch dishcloths dish each when you get these packages and they're really cheap. I think this one's like nine dollars and this one's like two dollars if you get them on sale at Michaels. So. Um, you need some yarn and then you also need some knitting needles. So I use the US size 6. I prefer metal ones. Um, you can use plastic ones as well. It's really up to you. I also prefer the longer ones. So to start your dishcloth, you're going to have to first put the yarn onto the knitting needle. Um, there's multiple different ways that you can do this. The easiest way that I have found is you wrap it around your finger so that you have a loop just like this, and then you pull it through the middle, holding on to the tails, and there is your first knot, just like that. It pulls straight through, so if you wanna do it again, so you just wrap it around your finger and pull it up through the middle, just like that. And then once you have that, you slip it onto your needle and you can tighten it up. I wouldn't go all the way tight because you need to be able to cast on stitches to start your dishcloth. Uh, but that is the easiest way to do it. So one more time, you make a loop, just like you would be tying an overhand knot, but when you bring the tail up, you hold on to it, cinch it tight just like that, and make sure you pull on the right end. And now your yarn is attached to your needle in the first um, stitch. So once you have your yarn on your needle, you're going to put your second one through and we are going to cast on some stitches. And so to do that, you're going to go as if you were knitting. So you're gonna pull it through and instead of sliding it off the first needle, you're gonna twist it around and pull it through back onto your second. You can see we now have two stitches. So I'll do that again because we're gonna be casting on four. So you go through the stitch with your second needle, wrap it, the yarn around like you're going to knit you pull it up and through, and then instead of sliding it off, put it back onto the first needle. And so there you have three stitches, and we'll do that once more so that you have four. And so this knitting pattern starts with four stitches. Um, so once you have them casted on, they will look like this. So I am going to pull the camera off the tripod really quickly to give a little bit more of a close up so you can see it directly from my perspective of how to do this step. And then I will see you back when you're ready to start knitting the actual dishcloth itself. Okay, so once again, to go over tying the knot, you're going to wrap it around your finger, pull it off your finger so it looks like this. And then you're gonna pull the long end through and tighten it up so that you have a stitch that looks like this. And that is going to be what you slide on to your knitting needle, just like that. And so now for casting on, you're gonna take your second needle, you're going to go through 
the stitch you created, you're going to take your long end that's attached to your ball of yarn. You're going to wrap it around the back needle, pull it up and through and straight up towards you, and then slide the stitch back onto the first one. And then when you pull it all tight, you have two stitches. So that's casting on. We're going to do two more. So wrap around the back needle, pull it through, pull it up, and then put it back onto your original needle. So one more time, I'm going to go through and around, pull it through, pull it up, and put it back onto the original needle. So that is casting on, and you're going to cast on four stitches. At any time, point, feel free to pause um, so you can catch up with the video. There are going to be sped up parts later on when we're doing the pattern work, um, but that's how you cast on, and this is how we're going to start our pattern. All right, so at this point, you have your four stitches casted onto your needle. And so we're going to be working this first half of the dishcloth by adding a stitch every single row. So every single row that you knit, your dishcloth is going to get one stitch um, wider. And so this is actually working from the corner and we're going to make the V up. And then for the second half of the dishcloth, we're going to subtract a stitch and taper it down. And so to add the stitch to the pattern, you're going to use yarn over, um, which is a stitch where you wrap the yarn around the wool or around the... <laughs> the knitting needle before knitting the next stitch and that's going to add a stitch to your row. And so the pattern for the first half of the dish cloth is going to be knit to the first two stitches, yarn over, and then knit all the rest in the row. So what that looks like is right now we have four stitches. So we are going to knit the first two, which you just wrap the yarn around the back, pull it through, and this time instead of pulling up and like we did in cast on, you're just going to pull it off that first needle. So now it's on the second needle and it should look like this. So you're going to go through with the second needle behind the first one. You're going to wrap the yarn around it, pull it through and pull it off. So now we have two stitches knit and two stitches that are still on the first needle. So this is when we're going to do the yarn over. And to do that, you're going to wrap the yarn around your second needle go underneath the third stitch and then simply knit it through. You've yarned over, so now there are four stitches on the second needle and we just have the one left on the first, so we're gonna knit that as well. And so that is your first row done. And now you can see that we actually have five stitches. And so that is really all there is to this dish cloth. You're gonna knit two yarn over for the first half so you can really do as many rows as you want to do for this. Um, I kind of go by feel. If you aren't sure if your dishcloth is going to be big enough, a really good tip is once it gets bigger to set it down on a piece of paper and take your pencil and trace the half and then flip it over to the other side to trace what would be the second half. And that'll give you a really good size of what size dishcloth you're currently at and whether you need to make it larger or not. Um, so yeah, you can follow along and knit with me. If you find this tail end is coming loose um, or you're having troubles with it, you can always just throw a little knot in there. Um, you don't have to, but just a simple overhand knot will help it from kind of coming loose. And so just wrapping it around and then snugging it up to the base. Just like that. And that will just help you uh, not have to worry about the tail end as you knit the rest of your dishcloth. So now we're going to keep going forward. We're going to do the same pattern over and over again. So you're going to, once again, knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, and then you're going to yarn over and knit till the end of the row. So now we have three stitches. Once you do that, you'll be able to see that there are now six stitches. And you can start to, you'll be able to start to see how the yarn over creates kind of a, a hole. And so when you see knit dishcloth, that's how you get the hole on the border. Um, and yeah, so that's just the entire pattern, basically. It's really not difficult. It's a little bit tricky to figure out as first. Um, but you really only need to know knit, yarn over, and knit two together, um, which in my opinion are the three easiest knitting stitches to learn. 
Um, so we're just going to keep on doing this. I'm probably going to make the rest of the video a little bit of a time lapse until we get to the second half of the dishcloth. But once again, for this first part, you're just going to knit two, yarn over, and knit to the end of the row. And that's all there is to the first half. Yes, hello birds. They're being noisy today. So feel free to pause the video at any time. You can knit along with me. So we have our dishcloth started and you can start to see how the there is the border with the holes in between on both sides and then your actual dish, dishcloth part here in the middle. And you also see how this pattern kind of creates that sideways triangle. Uh, so we're currently at 18 stitches in our row. Um, you can base the size of your dishcloth off the number of stitches. So anywhere from kind of like 40 to 50 to 60. Uh, stitches before you switch to the second half of the pattern should make a kind of smaller, medium, larger dishcloth. Um, but really, you can play around with it and make different sizes and see which size you like the best. I tend to like a little bit of a smaller dishcloth. I know my mom prefers a little bit of a larger one. Um, if you find that your stitches are really sticking on the needle or you're having to really kind of pull them to get them off, you're probably just cinching too tightly. Um, as you're knitting and that can make it a little bit trickier so you, it definitely doesn't have to be knit very tight you can kind of leave a little bit of slack as you're knitting and that should also help them slide off the needle um, better to do as I say not as I do I tend to knit quite tightly um, so I do run into that pattern so you might occasionally see me fussing with something um, but yeah so we just keep going with this I'm gonna stop and grab a hot chocolate really quickly and also probably move to the couch because it's a little comfier to sit on and we will finish the rest of this just cloth together. So I ended up grabbing a coffee instead of a hot chocolate, um, but these beautiful mugs are made by my very close friend, Becca, and her artwork is at by Becca Perry. Um, so make sure you check out her Instagram and she also has a really cool TikTok and website. Um, Cause yeah, if you have a fish nerd in your family, like myself and my husband, um, we love these mugs. They're super affordable and they also hold a ton of coffee, which is great. So she does have a holiday sale on right now. Um, so be sure to check out her stuff.
So at this point we have 27 stitches in a row and I already know this is a little bit smaller than I want it to be. Um, but just for example, this is how you can tell how big your dishcloth is going to be. You can kind of just trace out the sides of it approximately and then flip it over and do the same on the other side. And so right now this is about how big of a dishcloth it's going to be. I like to have one that's at least as big as my hand for when I'm scrubbing so I can see that I still need to go a little bit further. So I'm probably going to take this one to 40 stitches. All right, so at this point, I am now happy with the size of my dishcloth. This one's 35 stitches for the middle row, and it's a little bit on the smaller size. You can definitely go longer than this, but I'm just going to stop here um, just for the sake of keeping this video a little bit shorter. So now if you have reached the point where this first half of your dishcloth is the size you want, now we have to decrease each time. And so to do this, it's going to be a similar pattern to the first half of the dishcloth, but just slightly different. So for this one, the pattern is going to be knit the first stitch, knit the next two together, yarn over. So knitting together subtracts one, yarn over adds one, so we're still at zero difference. And then you're going to knit two more together again. So that's knit, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then you're going to knit to the rest of the row. Um, so first off... 
we'll have to show you how to knit two together. Once again, this is all really simple. You already know knit and yarn over at this point, so we're just adding one more in. So you're going to knit the first stitch, and to knit two together um, is quite literal. You're going to pick up two stitches on your needle, so we have two there, and you're going to knit them together. So two become one, yarn over, and then you're going to pick up two stitches and knit them together. So you've just taken five stitches and turned it into three. Um, so now we're just going to knit to the end of the row and continue on that until you get back to four stitches and then we will cast off and that is the end of knitting the dishcloth. So um, just bear with me while I knit the rest of this row and I will show you guys up close the knitting two together like I did with the yarn over step. All right, so for the second half, when we are reducing the number of stitches, to go over once again, we're going to knit the first stitch just like normal, and then we're going to pick up two stitches and just knit both of them together, just like that. So then you're gonna yarn over, and once again, to knit two together, you're going to pick up two stitches with your second needle and just pull both of them off when you knit together and then knit to the end of the row and you're going to keep doing this and reducing your number of stitches all the way until you have only four left in your dishcloth. All right so one more time for the reducing side you're going to knit the first stitch just like that and then you're going to knit two together so you're going to take the next two stitches put your needle under both of them knit them together then you're going to yarn over just like that and knit the next two together feel free to take your time with this it can be a little tricky getting used to it and just carry on with the same pattern, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then knit to the end of the row.
so now you should be down to the last four stitches on your dishcloth and this is where we're going to finish it off you can see we have a nice border um so now we have to cast off these four stitches and so it's a little bit tricky sometimes at first to get it but it's not inherently difficult so you're going to knit your first stitch just like you normally would and then you're going to knit your second stitch but where the cast off happens is you're going to pick up the back stitch and bring it forward and over top of the second one and then just let leave it off so that you're left with one. So to do that again, you're going to knit. So there's two stitches and then you're going to pull the back stitch. Oops. This is where it can be really easy for it to slip off. So you just have to hold on to everything. So you're going to pick up the back stitch and pull it over top and then let it go. So one more time, you're going to knit both. This will be probably where it's easiest to see on this last one here. You're going to pick up the back stitch. This is where if you're knitting tightly, it can be a little bit tricky. So you're going to pick up the back stitch and pull it over. So now when you're left with just one stitch, at this point, you can just pinch right where the stitch ends and pull this up. And so you have a little bit of room here and make sure you snug that down tight. At this point, you can set your knitting needles down and you're going to take a pair of scissors and just right in the center of this loop, you're just going to cut it. And then you're going to take your end that is attached to your ball of yarn and just very gently pull that through. So at this point now, your dishcloth is no longer attached to the ball of yarn. Um, just like on the bottom, you can throw a quick overhand knot into the top side, the part that you just cut, just for a little extra security. And then now at this point, it's completely up to you. Some people will just snip this off um, above the knot and have that be good. Um, that definitely works. Or if you have a needle here with a big wide base, what you can actually do is finish it off by threading the yarn through the needle. It's much easier to do this while you're not talking. And you can actually um, weave in the end into your dishcloth. So to do that, you simply just start weaving your needle through the stitches. Usually doing this along the edge is pretty easy. So just going back and forth through all the stitches we've created. And you want to do quite a few, especially if you have a longer tail piece, or you can always trim it down. And then at this point, you're just going to pull it straight through. Just like that. So now that tail end has disappeared. You can't see it. It's actually woven into the edge there and so you can do the same thing with the other side and you have an entire knitted dishcloth. So at this point you now have a finished off dishcloth so this is ready to use. You can wash these as well they do shrink or contract um, a little bit but they definitely are washable uh, and the reason I wanted to put this video out now and not later is because I use these as Christmas gifts quite a bit so um, they're a great sturdy dishcloth. They don't take very long to make when you get really practice at them. They can take as little as an hour. Um, so just as some examples, some different sizes, like here is a larger one I've made in the past, kind of more of a medium size, and then also a kind of smaller sized one. So once again, you can make these as big or as small as you'd like. Um, this one was 35 stitches across the longest um, row. And so there's kind of a little bit of a reference for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, and let me know if you end up making any dishcloths following this video. So, you know, you can pause it, take your time with it, come back to it. Um, and be sure to tag me in any of the pictures that you make. So I hope you guys all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.